uh, so you can always use discussion forum of the course to clarify your doubts uh, the answers will be given either there only or in the upcoming sessions so with this session you will be able to answer weekly assignments easily and also will provide you further understanding about complex topics holistically so i hope everyone are clear about the what this session are about uh, so now in today's session uh, we will first have a look of what we discussed in the last live session that was for week 4 of this course just a quick glance then we will discuss uh, week week 5 content wherein today we will discuss we will have a discussion on design of slabs so first we'll start with some basic terminal terminologies and their is 456 criteria regarding slab design this will include effective span load distribution bending and shear coefficients and deflection limits then we'll uh, discuss different types of slabs based on dimension in this we will uh, dig deep and in, into discussion about one way slab design and we'll see a numerical on it and then we will talk basics about design of two way slab and finally we will conclude the week so in the last live session of mine uh, we first talked about design of flange section wherein we summarized the design procedure in a flow chart and saw one numerical in which we made one initial assumption uh, of the case like which case the design belongs to we verified it and then we designed the section for reinforcement requirement uh, then we started a discussion uh, on shear failure wherein we first understood what is the difference between shear failure and flexor failure uh, the latter one we discussed first in the form of different kinds of failure and the fragile uh, loading and later on we discussed uh, about shear failure in which we this so this is how we first defined shear failure how it is happening along the cross section and then we saw different types of shear, shear failure uh and then we saw how these failures can be controlled that is by providing shear reinforcement across the crack either in the form of vertical stirrups or inclined stirrups or by use of so these are vertical stirrups uh these are inclined stirrups uh these are bend up bars and these are inclined stirrups okay and then finally we discussed how shear reinforcement is done as per codal provisions of is 456 okay so in rc both steel and concrete can resist shear uh, so uh, we first need to subtract the shear force that is resisted by concrete so for that which can be uh, so this is how the shear force is resisted by concrete and how much it resist we can calculate by knowing the grade of concrete and percentage and tensile reinforcement so we saw is provision for that and then we can calculate how much shear the steel needs to resist and in this also we saw three different cases if my shear force acting is more than the permissible limit then i need to redesign the section if the shear force acting is lesser than the permissible limit but more than the and less than the shear strength of concrete then we pro provide some nominal reinforcement and if my shear force that is acting is less than the permissible limit and more than the shear resistance of concrete then we need to design for shear reinforcement so we saw all three cases and later on we also talked some uh, theory about uh, inclined stirrups and what if my depth of section is varying and in total we saw four numericals to understand the design of shear reinforcement okay so i hope the content from last week is clear to everyone if not you can always revisit the session discussion either using the slides shared by nptel or by youtube channel of mine now today we will discuss the design of slabs so going in a sequential order uh first we need to understand what do we mean by slab so slabs are crucial uh, structural elements and is used to provide flat surface in a building so you can see both the examples in the adjacent images the slab on the roof and slab at different floor levels okay 
but this is very layman definition for a slab if we define slab from a design point of view then there will be two points so from a technical definition point of view a slab is a structural element whose thickness is less compared to length and breadth so this is the thickness this will be the breadth and this will be the length so slabs have a lower thickness compared to length and breadth and they are used to transfer load acting on the floor to beams or columns support by bending in one direction or more, more direction now how this load tra load is transfers we discussed in the first live session from floor so some load will be acting on floor from these floors the fl uh, load is transferred to the connecting beams from beams to supporting columns from columns to footings and from uh, finally from footing to the ground beneath so this is how load is transferred in a rc structure now based on the arrangement slab can be classified into three major categories first is individual slab second is continuous slab and third is cantilever slab so individual slab is also known as simply supported slab so this is like something we have a slab and we have some supports at the corner uh, just wait a minute I will mute myself for a minute. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Hello. Hello. Ah, yeah, uh, lab ka address pata hai, sir. Transit building is SCMT lab, hai, concrete lab. Haan, actually, I room mein tha, main aur kisi ko bol dunga, koi collect kar lega udar. Okay, so these uh, first we are talking about individual slabs. Okay, so these are nothing but simply supported slab on which the load is acting and they will tend to deflect in a, uh, this manner. Okay, in which we have maximum deflection in between and they will be fixed at the end. Okay, so some load will be acting on the top, it will cause deflection in between. Second is continuous slab. So what are these continuous slabs? So these are something like this. We have a long range of slab running and there are supports in between. Okay. So like this you can see continuous slab. So there are intermediate junctions of beam support. Now how this is different from uh, individual slab? Here apart from deflection in the middle, there can be movement also at the near the support okay so we need to take into account both positive and negative deflection okay so that's why we need to provide reinforcement in both tension and compression side based on the sign of the moment okay and finally we have cantilever slab so cantilever slab is nothing but uh, where one end terminates so if i try to draw so suppose from this side i have a continuous slab running and here my slab is ending so this portion is known as the cantilever part okay so we have deflection in this manner okay so these are the different types of slab based on the location now before uh, moving deep into the design of slabs there are four key parameters that are related to the design of slab these are effective span load distribution moment and shear coefficient and depth of the slab so what is code says uh, regarding them let's see one by one okay so first we have effective span okay why it is important to calculate the effective span for determining the bending and shear force that a particular slab needs to resist and this is done by is 456 clause 22.2 okay so what this code says, so for individual or simply supported slab, effective span is nothing but the clear span plus effective depth or center to center distance between the support. So suppose this is my support and this is my slab resting on the support. So this part will be my clear span and these are the support. So either clear span plus effective depth of the slab or 
this distance center to center distance uh, between the supports so minimum of these two value will be my effective span for slab for continuous slab there are two cases if the width of the support so suppose this width is w so if the width of the support is one less than 1 by 12 times the clear span then we say effective span is minimum of clear span so is effective that comma center to center distance between the support else if this case is not true my effective span will be nothing but the clear span only okay and for cantilever slab it is clear span plus effective depth or length of uh, till the center of the support so if my c this is my cantilever slab so either this length plus effective depth or this length from end till center of the support okay so minimum of these will be my effective span so this is these are the codal guidelines for defining the effective span of slab now what are the different kinds of load that we consider uh, while designing slab so there is self feed due to concrete uh, so we consider 20 kilo newton per meter cube okay so we know the dimension of our slab length breadth and width so we can calculate the self weight of the concrete self weight of the slab for finishing we consider 1.5 kilo newton per square meter load and for characteristic uh, like imposed load for roof we consider uh, these values if the roof can be accessed by people then we consider 1.5 kilo newton per square meter and if it it if if it can't be accessed by anyone so we consider 0.75 kilo newton per square meter and for floors we consider 2 kilo newton per square meter for residential building and 3 km per square meter for office floors so these are the loadings that we need to consider while we need to design slab okay now we have bending and shear coefficients this is specifically this will specifically come into play when we are talking about continuous slab okay why we saw a discussion earlier only due to continuous loading uh, and intermediate supports there can be movement near the support also so as per is 456 these are the coefficients that we need to consider when we are defining the moments so depending upon moment near the middle of the end span or near the interior span or near the support we need to choose this moment and these coefficient and in which uh, what we need to multiply these coefficient with with wl wl square or wl depending upon how you are defining w kilonewton per meter if this is in kilonewton per meter then this will be wl square if this is kilonewton then this will be wl and alpha that coefficient you will obtain from this table okay similarly for shear coefficient also you can obtain the coefficient okay and we will define for the worst case so depending upon the bending moment value that we are getting we will choose the worst case and we will design for it okay and finally we have depth of slab but this doesn't come directly into action the need to define this provision for slab depth comes into play to control the deflection in slab uh, I saw some uh, imposed loads are generally the fixed load, dead load you can say that is the thing. Just wait a second. Hello? I don't know. 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 I will be on mute for like 2-3 minutes just wait we will start resume the session Ma'am you lab in the Ma'am, I have a parcel below. Please let me know. My class is going. I will not come. Okay. वो उधर हाइड्रोलिक लैब के पास ही खड़ा हुआ है सोल स्टोर से है हर्षित नाम लोगे तो दे देंगे और अगर आ, मैं आपको नंबर भेज देता हूँ व्हाट्सएप पे आप उनको कॉल कर लेना अगर हाँ मेरी क्लास चल रही है इसलिए मैं जल्दी जल्दी कर रहा हूँ
हाँ आप जाओ वहां पर बोलना हर्षित का है आप चलो नीचे तो उतरो मैं कॉल पे रही हूँ नहीं नहीं शुरू ही रखो मैंने पॉज कर दी क्लास कैसे दिखाऊं अब मैं देखा क्या है क्या हाँ अच्छा उनसे उनसे बोलो ना ओ टी पी भेजे अच्छा एक मिनट सिक्स एट वन थ्री सेवन एट चलो मैम बाय थैंक यू सॉरी इट वॉज एन अर्जेंट कॉल ओके हाँ सो फॉर कैंटिलेवर इफेक्टिव स्पैन प्लस हाफ ऑफ द इफेक्टिव दिफ आई गेस वॉट आई रोट इज करेक्ट इट इज इफेक्ट क्लियर स्पैन प्लस हाफ ऑफ द इफेक्टिव दिफ आई विल चेक वंस इट शुड बी दैट ओनली वेन टू यूज द इम्पोस्ट लोड फिक्स एंड वेन टू यूज इम्पोस्ट लोड नॉट फिक्स क्राइटेरिया ओके जनरली दैट थिंग इज मैंशन टू अस whether the imposed load is fixed or not fixed so when we are talking about dead load or something na so our imposed load will be fixed and we are when we are talking about something like live load acting on the floor then our the load will be not not fixed so in that case we consider the second uh, row imposed load load is something that is acting on the top of the floor okay apart from the dead weight so imposed load also can be two types something which is fixed on the floor that won't move or that won't change with time and something that is movable like people or something so that in that way you can uh, use when to use imposed load load fixed and not fixed okay we will uh, proceed ahead so where were we on the okay so finally we are talking about finally we will talk about depth of slab now this doesn't come directly into action we need we need this provision for depth of slab uh, to control the deflection in slab so what ias code says the final deflection due to all load including temperature creep and shrinkage should not be more than Two fifty uh, span upon two fifty. This span is clear span. Okay. So if this is my B slab and this is how it is deflecting, so this deflection delta should not be more than span upon two fifty under this condition. And in another condition, deflection including effect of creep, shrinkage, and temperature before erection of partition or application of finishes. So if we consider there is no finishing finishes that is applied on the slab then the deflection should not be more than minimum of span upon 350 or 20 mm now it is often difficult to calculate this deflection so what is code says the, these vertical limits may be generally assumed to be satisfied provided the span to depth ratio is not greater than the value that is de, uh, described in these four points so what the code says the basic value of if span to effective depth ratio for a span up to 10 meter should be these value so initially when you are designing a slab you need to consider the 
you need to assume the depth of the slab using these criteria. Okay. Now this is for span up to 10 meter. For span above 10 meter, these value will be multiplied by a factor of 10 upon span. Okay. And depending upon the area of reinforcement and the stresses in steel in both tensile and compression side, we also need to modify this factor. So there are modification factor alpha, beta, gamma you can define and these will be calculated based on the reinforcement that we are providing. So finally when we will check whether our deflection is under limit or not, we need to multiply these uh, factors and need, we need to check again. So today in one of the numerical we will see how this uh, whole thing is taken into account. Okay. So what are these modification factors of of tensile and compression reinforcement, these are given through these. This is one table, this is one figure from IS456 and this is another figure. So this table is for tensile reinforcement, this is for compression reinforcement. Okay. Do we have any limits for fixed support conditions? So when we are talking about simply support, it is the fixed support condition only. No? From both the side, fixed support uh, will be in the form of simply supported uh, condition only. I am not trying, I am not able to get your uh, query. It, is it clear? Okay, okay. So I hope uh, this thing about effective depth is clear why we are using the depth provision so that we can control the deflection. So just to summarize these provisions that we have discussed and some other uh, minor provisions that are there in IS code for design of slab. So we have first effective span for which we saw many clear, clear span plus effective depth or center to center distance between support. L by D ratio that we saw just right now for control of deflection. Then there is one provision for minimum reinforcement. So this should be 0.12% of gross sec uh, sectional area. So what is gross sectional area? B times D. Okay. Maximum diameter of barge. It should not be more than one eighth of the slab thickness. Generally for slab we use 8 mm to 12 mm dia bars. Okay. So if while designing, when we are considering the diameter of the bar, it should be in this range only. You should start with this range only. Spacing between the main reinforcements. So, when we are designing a slab, what we do, we consider 1 meter width of the slab and we determine how much reinforcement is provided and spacing between those reinforcements. Okay, so generally, the spacing between the main, uh, main reinforcement should not be more than 3 times the effective depth. 3D or 300. Okay. Distribution steel, we will see when we are need to provide the distribution reinforcement. So that area should be 0.12% of gross sectional area if we are using HYSD steel. HYSD means FE415 or FE500. Okay. And if we are using mild steel, mild steel means FE250 grade. Okay. So if we are using mild steel, we need to provide 0.15% uh, of area of mild steel. My area of mild steel means the area that we have provided in tensile reinforcement in the uh, longitudinal section uh, direction. Okay, And concrete cover, it should not be less than 25 mm or 2 times the diameter of bar. Now this 25 may be reduced to 20 mm also or 15 mm depending upon the exposure condition. Okay, so when we have mild exposure condition, we can even go up to 15 mm, okay, in mild exposure. Okay, so these are some of the basic design parameter and their required criteria. So now we have a certain understanding about design parameters of slab. Now we can have a look into how slab is designed. So slab design is divided into four categories based on the dimension of the slab what are these dimensions these are so suppose if i have a slab like this sorry
so suppose i have a slab like this so these are the dimensions i am talking about the length and the breadth okay so the length across the x and y direction that uh, that is what we are talking about now if the ratio of this longer side to the ratio of shorter side is more than 2 then we say the slab is one way slab okay what do we mean by one way slab what is the meaning of one way this uh, by this we mean that the slab will deflect only around one direction so if some load is acting on the slab the deflection will be only along the one direction and that, that direction will be along the shorter direction okay along the shorter span now if the ratio of longer length to the shorter length is less than 2 we say the slab is two way slab so why we say slab as two way slab so suppose this is my slab uh, by two way we mean the slab can deflect around both the direction when the load is acting and thus we need to provide reinforcement along both the direction okay apart from one way slab and two way slab we also have so these two are the major categories apart from this we also have flat slab and flat plate okay what is the difference between the two flat slab is nothing but which directly lies over the column but with an extended base near the support of the column so if i try to draw that thing so this is like my flat slab running over the top okay and these are my columns okay directly there is no beam in between directly it is supported by the column so near the column it will have some extended portion of base okay so these are flat slabs and flat plate is something which is directly resting on the column with no extended base okay so these are generally some minor categories we will uh, look into the design of these also in some later uh, week of nptel <coughs> so, uh, sir uh, slab definition also changes with the uh, with sports sir uh, what sir uh, sometimes sir if uh, the slab is uh, Uh, two way, but if we are providing only two sports, sir, then it is we we have to calculate on the basis of two way or we go for one way, sir. Uh, I was I am not clear what you are trying to ask. Can you please uh, reframe your sir? question? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 good. Uh, good evening, sir. <coughs> sir, uh, uh, I want to ask. My doubt is that that uh, uh, that slab definition changes. with the uh, uh, depend upon the sports also sir uh, for example uh, if if uh, there is a, we are providing only uh, uh, two sports sir and uh, bending is predominant in the two way also in the one direction sir on that case also we have to go for two direction or we go for one direction only sir no 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 this one way slab two way slab it is just defined based on the dimension of the slab okay why we are defining like this because when the length of the shorter side is much smaller than compared to the longer side na so it is natural that the bending that will be happening in the shorter direction only now the supports that you are talking so actually during design part what we do we first design the slab then we are designing the support okay so later on you will see the supports and all we are that we are providing it depends upon the kind of slab that we have at the top okay so when we have one way slab na we provide support along the opposite direction only not in the, all the four direction along the longer side only and in the opposite direction when we are talking about two way slab there will be support along all the four direction support by support we be we mean the beams okay so later on you will see how this support in all comes into action but yeah yeah thank you thank you thank now, you sir thank you sir anything one way slab or two way slab it is based on the dimension of the slab okay just remember while designing we design first slab then beam then column and then footing but during the construction it is the opposite okay thank you sir thank you sir okay. sir we, we uh, in the next class, uh, uh, lecture we are also talking uh, talking about the moment also sir ha uh, we will see we will see everything one by one 
everything that is there in IS four five six, we will see one by one. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. So these are the four uh, main categories of slab based on the dimension. Okay. Now we know different types of slab based on the dimension. So let's look at the design part one by one. So first we have one way slab. So now the thing will be clear to you. So uh, what are one way slab? Just to recap, these are the slabs that are only supported around two opposite directions such that the load is car carried along. I think sir, you forget to unmute sir. Oh, sorry. So I, as I was saying, uh, we have seen all the four different types of slab based on dimension. So let's look at the design part one by one. Okay. So first is the design of one way slab. So just to reiterate, what is one way slab? Where LX by LY ratio is greater than, LY by LX ratio is greater than two. Now in this case, as I just stated, the supports are designed as per the slab only. So in this case, the support is only provided along the two opposite directions such that the load is carried along one direction only. So the deflection will be along this direction only and support are along opposite direction. Okay. And these are made to span along the shorter side. So the supports are designed such that the slab will span along only one side. Okay. So these are one way slab. Now how reinforcement detailing is done in this? We provide main reinforcement along the span direction that is along the shorter span to resist this bending and we provide some distribution steel along the transverse direction also. Why? To distribute any kind of unevenness that may occur in loading or for temperature and shrinkage effect we provide some minimum reinforcement. So what is this minimum reinforcement distribution steel reinforcement we saw in this uh, general uh, in this slide. Okay, so this is 0.12% of gross area or 0.15% of area. What is this area? How much we are providing along the main reinforcement direction? The main reinforcement area, that is what it, what it is. So 0.15 times main reinforcement or 0.12 times main reinforcement depending upon the grade of steel that we are using. Now, practically where, this, where these kinds of slabs are generally found, they are generally found in verandas or chajas. So if you see, uh, chajas are some elements over the roof, over the window. Okay. So there you find one way slab or in the verandas, you find one way slab where the one side of the, uh, uh, of the section will be much smaller compared to the other side. So here you can find application of one way slab design. Okay. So how these slabs are how to design one way slabs so these are the steps how to design one way slab so firstly we need to check whether a slab is one way or not so longer side to shorter side should be greater than two now when this slab only bends along one direction that is along shorter span okay so if it is bending along one direction then we can assume it as a beam only okay so in beam also there is one direction uh, bending all, only now so we can assume one way slab design as similar to the beam design that we saw earlier so to analyze and design one way slab we can design similar to beam by considering the width of the slab as one meter so what we do generally the slab width can be like four meter five meter six meter ten meter it can be anything so what we do, we design one way slab, uh, slab for a one meter width and we say the same design will hold along the width of the slab continuously. So we try to design this slab for reinforcement for one meter. We provide, we say that we need to provide say 10 mm or 12 mm reinforcement along the tension side at a spacing of 100 mm and this will hold true for the whole width of the slab. Okay, so initially we consider B as 1 meter or 1000 mm. Okay, now how to design one way slab? So first we need to choose the L by D ratio because we know, don't know the depth of the slab but we know the length of the slab. Okay, so we'll choose some L by D ratio. Now generally code says it is 25 for simply support but we know that some modification factor can also occur later on. So what we choose, we choose a little higher value. You can choose 26, 27 or something. Okay, and based on your assumption, you calculate the effective depth that will be D provided. Okay, as the span upon basic value. Okay, 
now we'll calculate the moment and the shear force because we know the effective length okay l we know l is along shorter span okay so this is the l that will be considered by l by us during design lx so we'll calculate the bending and shear force acting then we will check for minimum depth that is required by calculating the mu limiting we know how to calculate mu limiting okay we saw in the beam design section now if my depth provide is, uh, provided is more than the depth required uh, then we can proceed ahead else we need to redesign the slab so what we mean by redesigning the slab we need to change this ratio okay that we chose initially now once we have verified that our depth is correct we need to calculate the area of steel reinforcement required per meter width of the slab by determining the diameter and spacing of reinforcement so this is how we have defined the one meter length of the slab and we will calculate the area of distribution steel because we know the grade of the steel that we are using and we know the area of reinforcement in the main reinforcement direction we will check for deflection once we have provided the tensile reinforcement in everything by calculating the modification factor we will check the L by D ratio so that should be lower than what we have provided uh, so if it is lower we will say we are safe for deflection we will check for shear the check for shear you know just how we did for beam we will do for slab and we will provide the development length okay so that we will see later on okay so these are the general steps nine steps that you need to follow when you are designing a slab okay so now we will uh, yeah sir i have a doubt sir uh, sir for example we are uh, in this case we are calculating bending moment by using w s square by 8 for simply supported beam sir yeah. sir but uh, in if in actual life uh, uh, four sides are restrained then we have to go for is code factor sir that restrained and minus moment positive moment sir uh, for that you need to go for that okay sir but in case we using stad pro sir then how we can do that sir what 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 sir if uh, we doesn't want uh, manual calculation and we are using stad pro software uh, so that we how uh, in that stad pro we just put that one beam and then we calculate directly sir moment sir for one Actually, meter uh, i don't know much about stad pro but from my knowledge or my experience there are generally these codal provisions now they are predefined in the software only so you need to select a, a, according to which provision you are designing the slab or the beam you need to provide the loading condition on the slab the dimension of the slab and all the calculation it does on its own okay sir thank you sir thank you okay just check once but i have used it for designing for some seismic reinforcement thing and for that it had all the codes inbuilt in the software you just need to select the code thank you sir okay so let's look at one numerical now so this is numerical design a simply supported one way slab over a clear span of 3.5 meter it carries a live load of 4 kN per meter square and a floor finish of 1.5 kN per meter square the width of the supporting wall is 230 mm adopt m20 grade concrete and fe415 grade steel the slab is in mild exposure condition okay so these are the information given to you in the question i will wait for five minutes you try to solve it on your own or else think how the solution can be done and then i will tell you the solution okay i will keep myself on mute for five minutes now
uh, see Udaya Kumar, whatever doubts that you mentioned, na, they were all related to the design life. Okay, now what is generally assumed, like uh, uh, as per the codal provisions, they say that if you are following all the codal provision, if you are satisfying everything that has been mentioned in the code while designing your reinforced concrete structure then they say that your design life will be sufficient like more than 50 years or more than 75 years generally now how to identify design life it is a completely different things okay because while designing a building we don't consider that external factors uh, environment aggressiveness and everything actually what role it can play we don't uh, that much accurately we take into account though we take like in the, if you see in is code they mention if the exposure condition is severe or mild or moderate then you need to choose these 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 minimum value that they say so that you can have this minimum service life but what will be actually the service life it is not like it can't be defined by code okay that is a completely different thing so just to like give you one point how it can be different if you know about corrosion now we assume that everything that we are using steel and everything reinforcement that we are using it is uncorroded or it is completely pure steel but generally on site there can be some mishandling of things we want to design for m25 but due to poor work workmanship our design can be m20 or it can be it can be m30 or the steel we are using it may not be properly uh, placed or there can be various factor that can change on field uh, different from what we designed so that can change or hamper our service life by a very different amount so that thing we can't like define in code it is like something experimentally that is done later on by like assessing the structure or doing some NDT testing or elaborate skill testing we identify what will be the design life but just to simplify the discussion if we are following all the codal provisions then we can say that the design life of the building will be at least 75 to 100 years that is what we can say after designing I hope you are clear with what it is, uh, what I just told. Okay, so now we'll see the solution. Okay, so here also for mild exposure conditions, since it it was given. So earlier I mentioned this that concrete cover should not be less than twenty five mm. Generally, what code says now for moderate exposure condition, it should not be twenty five mm. But if my exposure condition is lighter like mild exposure condition i have so the concrete cover can be taken as 20 mm also and if the diameter of main reinforcement that we are using is less than 12 mm for slab we can remove reduce the concrete cover further by 5 mm so for this question let's say i will use 10 mm dia for main reinforcement okay and my exposure condition is mild so my cover will be 15 mm okay so this cover i will assume okay now let's see the solution for this i will duplicate the slide Just so that you have the question at the top. So we'll go step by step. We know the cover, it is 15 mm. Okay, so step one will be to define the depth. Okay, uh, it is given one way slab, so we don't need to check it again. So step one is trial depth and effective span calculation okay so for this since it is a simply supported slab we know the condition what is that condition 
L by 20. L by 20. Now we know that the reinforcement and modification factor can increase this factor. So let's assume approximate depth B as L by 26. Okay, you can assume 25, you can assume 20, 30. I did calculation using M L by 26, so I will show that for now. So it will be 3000. 3500 divided by 26 so it will be around 134 mm so this is the effective depth we that we are assuming so overall depth will be given by d is equal to small d okay now see one more thing if I am uh, calculating all, overall depth from effective depth, what will come? It will be 134 plus effective cover, clear cover 15 mm plus diameter of arc that I am taking 10 mm diabarna. So it will come out to be 154 mm. Now generally for field practice, this value is difficult to control okay so always what we need to do we need to assume some depth in a round number form okay so i will assume depth of 160 ml so my effective depth will be 160 minus 15 minus 5 so it will be 140 ml so it is around L by 26.5 or L by 27. Uh, sorry, L by 25 or L by... Sir, sir, we are using sir 5 mm diameter. Diameter is 10 mm, na? this is radius. Okay, 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 sir. Okay. Till the middle of the rebar, we assume the effective depth. Na? Yes, yes, sir, I got it, sir. Okay, so 140 mm, we are assuming the effective depth you got the reason why if i am using this effective depth now my overall overall depth would, would not be in a like a practical value so that's why i changed the overall depth to 160 mm and I, then i choose the effective depth and that ratio will be around 25 to 26 only so that is much safer than what we need to take our limit is 1 by 20 and we are assuming more than that only so we are on the safer side only okay now we know the Effective depth, second is effective span. So, effective span will be nothing but minimum of air cover 3.5 meter plus the center to center distance between the support. So, it is nothing but clear span plus half of the support, uh, half of the length of the support from one side, half of the length of the support on the other side. So, this is center to center distance between the support or clear span plus effective depth so you will see these value will be 3.73 or 3.64 now minimum of this will be 3.64 mm meter okay so my effective span will come out to be 3.64 meter okay so this completes our first step now step 2 so i will just append value here so capital D is 160 mm, small d is 140 mm, mean D bar dia is 10 mm, okay, and L effective is 3.64 meter, okay. Now we will proceed on to the step. So step 3 is to calculate the bending and bending moment and shear force. Okay, so for that we need to first know the load, total load. Okay, so load on the slab. So how will we define load on the slab? So we have three cases. Self weight. Self weight is nothing but. Unit weight into depth. 
okay so it will be dd times uh, uh, 25 so i assume b is my 1 meter so that will be one total depth i know and kg per meter square okay so that is 25 okay so i will get the value kilo newton per meter square so 25 this is the like generally what we assume for concrete okay so it will come out to be 4 kilo newton per meter square okay now this is per unit width okay so that load will come like this second will be floor finish sir sir, uh, sir. so sometimes sir, they uh, in the books they are written kilo newton per meter sir uh, but, right uh, now we are defining in kilo newton per meter square if it is in kilo newton per meter later on you need to like multiply with l only or something like that okay sir okay this should also be in kilo newton per meter square ha huh? this will like be Uh, because the uh, unit weight is a kilo newton meter uh, cubes uh, uh, cubes uh, then uh, meter meter will cut the one meter left sir okay this will be in kilo newton per meter okay i am my mistake okay no sir mistake no sir but na sometimes in books they are written in kilo newton meter square some books they written kilo newton per meter sir i have always a doubt sir on this okay okay Ha ah, so this will be in kilo newton per meter okay this is 25 kilo newton per meter cube my width is 1 meter and my uh, depth is 0.16 so it will be 4 kilo newton per meter now similarly my four floor finish how will i give 1 meter into 1.5 kilo newton per meter square so it will come out to be 1.5 kilo newton per meter only okay and similarly uh, for live load we have given live load uh, condition it is given to us so live load will be 1 into 4 so it will be 4 kilo newton per meter okay so my total load will come out to be uh, 4 plus 4 plus 1.5 9.5 now this is working load so ultimate load will be 9.5 times the load factor 1.5 so it will come out to be 14.5 14.25 kilo newton per meter okay now bending moment okay so bending moment will be nothing but wl square by 8 so i know w it is 14.25 L square, so it is three point six four into three point six four divided by eight. So this value will come out to be twenty three point six kilo newton meter. Okay, and my shear force it will be W L by eight. No, W L by two. So shear force will be fourteen point two five into three point six four divided by two. So it will come out to be twenty five point nine three kilo newton. So this this will be our bending moment and shear force for which we need to design the slab. Okay, now step four. So I will just append this these values here. So Mu is twenty three point six kilo newton meter, and Vu is twenty five point nine three kilo newton. Just wait a second, yeah. Hello. Hostel pe ho. Ah. Mera parcel collect karo hai kya? मेरी क्लास चल रही है सर मैं जा नहीं सकता कहीं पर भी ओके आई विल सी दिस डाउट उदय कुमार एट द एंड ना फर्स्ट आई विल टेल द सॉल्यूशन ओके सो वी हैव गॉट आवर बेंडिंग मोमेंट इन शेयर फोर्स नाउ नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज टू चेक वेदर 
are d provided is more than d required or not so minimum depth required how will we determine minimum depth required by calculating mu limiting by calculating using mu limiting so i will just directly write that formula so small it is 0.138 fck d d square is equal to mu okay so it will come yes, sir. okay so from this d will come out to be under root of mu upon 0.136 0.138 fck b now the, i got this 0.138 factor this is for fe415 grid seal how we calculate from strain diagram and calculate the xu by d limiting value and get this value okay you can check the discussion on design of beam you will understood how i wrote directly this formula so let me just calculate this value i don't have the calculation just a minute so it will come out to be 92.4 mm and what uh, we provided was 140 mm so it is okay the depth that we have provided is more than what it is required okay so we are safe okay we can proceed on with this depth okay so this is the first check now since the depth is correct my next step will be to calculate the area of main reinforcement per meter length of slab okay that is important that you need to remember okay so i have, how i will calculate this area so mu is equal to from beam design what we say 0.87 fy ast b ast b b minus 0.42 x uh, 0.42 x u so this is something how i wrote now okay now here what you will find now you need to calculate x and everything first so rather than using this formula i will tell you a direct formula that you should remember by now so directly how to calculate ast generally if you will use the design of beam section now what will happen it will form a quadratic equation that you need to solve and get the ast value but if possible try to remember this formula directly okay 0.5 fck upon fy whole into So this is a simplified version of the earlier equation. It is one minus uh, under root of one minus four point six mu divided by fck b b square. Okay. Sir, agar ham uh, sir, if we can also. Uh, do in the, uh, that way also na sir ki uh, in this case we doesn't want to uh, get the effective ast so we have a limit formula that 19.87 fck by f will give the maximum limit of ast then if uh, we get maximum ast we provide less then it is under reinforced directly sir so how much less you will provide so like sir uh, sir in this we are not concerned about uh, economical conditions sir then the how much uh, that much less sir you can't like like uh, maximum you can always calculate but you can't always uh, assume na that i will provide 10% less or 20% less if that would have been the case then what is the need of designing a section yes sir okay so always what we need to do we need to calculate ast as per balance section failure or something okay and then we need to check what is the maximum that we can provide okay okay sir okay so not as per balance section but as per moment that is acting okay so 
AST for AST try to remember this formula directly now because every time calculating the neutral axis depth first and then calculating AST it is like more complex when you are trying to solve for a slab or something now it, it will take you a lot of time to do that calculation every time so try to remember this formula it is 0.5 FCK upon FY whole into 1 minus under root of 1 minus 4.6 MU upon FCK BD square whole into BD okay so in my discussion slide you will find this formula later on also you can just note this formula for now and you will find this relationship elsewhere also if you will see okay so in this what we need to do we know FCK we know FY we know MU MU is 23.6 kilo newton meter so 23.6 into 10 to the power 6 newton millimeter so we know b b is 1 1 meter so it will be 1000 mm and effective depth d is 140 mm okay and bd again here so upon substituting all the values just let me do the calculation So it will come out to be around 505 mm square. Okay. Now you can check whether this area is less than the minimum reinforcement also. So 0.21%, 0.12% of gross sectional area. So what it will be? 0 0.01 into 0.12 into thousand into 180 no gross sectional area na 160 so it will be one nine two one nine two mm so oh, yeah. it is more than the minimum reinforcement that is required so this is this can be considered for design okay this is how we use the provisions of IS code every time okay now this is the total reinforcement area per meter length so we need to define the spacing so we are using 10 mm diameter rebar so spacing will be calculated as nothing but AST area of one steel rebar upon total area of reinforcement into 1000 mm okay into 1000 because we are considering one meter so for 10 mm rebar uh, my area of one steel reinforcement will be around 78 mm and it is the total is 505 mm square 78 mm square total is 505 mm square into 1000 so it will come out to be around 154 mm okay now generally for design we can't provide this value so we will assume 150 mm okay 150 or 160 we need to assume so we will be providing provide 10 mm diameter bars at the rate 150 center to center across the length now is this 150 satisfying the criteria so it should be less than 3d or 300 so it is less than d is 140 so it is less than 420 mm also and 300 mm also so we are okay with the design okay now also calculate the percentage steel later on we will require so it is nothing but ast upon bd into 100 so it is nothing but 505 divided by 1000 into 140 into 100 so it will come out to be 0 0.37 
0.37%. Okay. No, we have assumed the spacing of 150 mm. No? So it, this value will append to 524. Okay. So this will be my. So this is under reinforced. Ah, this is under reinforced. That is what we need. Okay, so just remember this value later on when we are calculating modification factor, we'll need. Okay, now next step. Okay, so just to add here, we have provided 10 mm diameter rebar at the rate 150 mm C2C and AST percentage of reinforcement was 0.37 percent now the next step is to provide the distribution steel area of distribution reinforcement so that is nothing but since we are using HYSB steel so it will be 0.12% of cross area ok now uh, I mistakenly said the wrong thing at the start this gross area is the area of the section that is B times D it is not the area of the reinforcement ok so it is 0.12 into 0 0.01 into 1000 into 160 so it will be 192 mm square okay so similarly let's assume we are providing 8 mm diameter d bar for distribution steel we can calculate spacing as ast upon total ast into 1000 so it will be nothing but uh, pi r square so it will come out to be around 50 upon 192 into 1000 so it will be 260 mm ok so we will provide 8 mm diameter d bar at the rate 260 mm center to center as distribution steel ok now check whether this 260 is enough or not so code says the criteria is it should be less than 5d or 450 mm so you will see it will satisfy ok so it is ok to go forward with now after this we will have step 6 ok that will be for check for shear ok so you know how we check for shear uh, we will first calculate tau v so tau v is nothing but tau v is uh, shear strength sir uh, shear strength that we need to resist ok so it is nothing but vu upon bb so just let me do the calculation So our tau will come out to be 0.18 Newton per mm square. We know VU value, we know B and we know D. E small d, sorry. Okay. Now tau C max, how we can obtain tau C max from code based on the grade of concrete. So for M20 grade concrete it is 2.8 Newton per mm square 2.8 or 1.8 it is 
2.0 1. Point anything our value is less than that now we also need to calculate tau c the shear resistance of concrete so for percentage of steel equal to 0.37 percent and m20 grade concrete using the flow chart or the uh, table given in is456 you will see tau c will come out to be 0.42 now since my tau v is less than tau c we need to provide just nominal reinforcement in this case okay i hope you know what is nominal reinforcement minimum uh, minimum reinforcement so how we calculate that asv upon sv should be greater than 0.87 times 0.4 upon 0.87 fi something like this there is a formula okay just check this and provide the minimum reinforcement that is something we did a lot in the last class so i will won't repeat that okay i will move ahead okay now i will just append the data here uh, for distribution steel we have provided 8 mm diameter rebar at the spacing of 260 mm center to center as distribution steel okay now what is the next step we need to check for deflection okay so check for sir sir if we want to uh, provide a bent up bar then what we have to do sir generally we don't provide bent up bar until like there is high shear force resistance that we need to do and if we want to provide bent up bar there are some codal guidelines of like how many bars you need to bend and from how much distance from the support that you need to bend uh, I don't remember those provisions as of now but there are some provisions you can see the code ones okay what are the exact term in uh, uh, what are the exit values that they use I don't remember around now but generally we avoid providing bend up bar until and unless it is become it becomes very necessary okay First you, criteria sir. is to go with the vertical stirrups, then the inclined stirrups, and then at the end go with bend up bars. Okay. So what is the check for deflection? The L by D that we have provided. Actually, what we have provided should be less than the L by D allowable. Okay. So how this will come out to be? What will be my L by D allowable? It will be L by D basic what code says into modification factors. Now what are these modification factors? There will be one modification factor if my span is more than 10 mm. There will be one modification factor if my uh, due to tension reinforcement and there will be one modification factor due to compression reinforcement in our case there is no compression reinforcement so this modification factor will be removed and in our case my clear span is 3.5 mm only which is less than 10 mm so this modification factor also i will remove okay so i have only one modification factor which is k2 now what is the value of k2 i know percentage steel that is 0.37 okay and I know okay so 0.37 percentage tensile reinforcement I know which is something here okay and I know my area of cross section steel that I have provided upon area of cross section steel that was required okay that also I know 505 and 524 okay so based on that you can calculate the value of FY and you know the percentage steel so you will just try to match a vertical line you will drop here and horizontal line you will drop from here so what you will observe 
एफ एस वैल्यू योर एफ एस वैल्यू विल बी क्लोज टू टू फोर्टी एम एम आई वोट शो शो दैट कैलकुलेशन राइट नाउ बिकॉज वी नीड टू डिस्कस अ लॉट ऑफ अदर थिंग्स ऑल्सो सो जस्ट सब्सक्रूट द वैल्यूज दैट यू हैव यू विल गेट एन एफ एस अराउंड टू फोर्टी एम एम एंड परसेंटेज स्टील यू हैव पॉइंट थ्री सेवन सो योर वैल्यू विल कम आउट समथिंग अराउंड वन पॉइंट फोर और जस्ट लोअर टू वन पॉइंट फोर वी कैन टेक इट एज वन पॉइंट थ्री एट ओके so my k2 will come out to be 1.38 okay so based on this my l by d allowable will be l by d basic what is my l by d basic 20 for simply supported slab into 1.38 so this value will come out to be 27.6 and what we actually provided it was uh 36 uh 35 uh, effective length so it will come out to be 3630 effective length is my 3640 divided by 140 my d is 140 so it will come out to be around 26 okay so my l by d actual is uh, less than l by d uh, allowable so we are safe for deflection also okay so this is the check for deflection that we okay did. sir okay sir but in exam uh, graph is uh, provided or uh, no, graph we... should be provided because you can't remember the values okay okay sir okay that should be provided okay so finally we have done all the checks so the final step is to represent everything on a diagram so that's why i was noting this value for for every piece so that we can draw a diagram in the end so <coughs> i will try to draw a rough diagram for now you can always use a pen and a <coughs> pencil and a scale to draw so how do you draw the diagram you first draw the slab dimension with the support okay so here will be the supports okay you know this clear length you will know and this length you will know so you need to mention all these three lengths and you need to mention the total length also okay and here also you can mention the total length okay <coughs> now i will have two kinds of rebars so this will be my main reinforcement which is spanning along the shorter uh side and this along this side will i will have my distribution steel so generally what code says that alternate bars you need to bend okay at the end okay this is a design criteria of what code says so the main reinforcement you need to bend like this alternatively one along this side one along this side and similarly you need to provide along the whole width of this pattern okay so here you need to mention the uh dimension also so it was 10 mm dia 150 c2c okay so this was our main reinforcement and this is the diagonal reinforcement how it is running 8 mm dia 260 c2c and how much this distance should be for bending from where near the support you need to bend it is 0.1 l okay so this is something that is mentioned in the code so 0.1 l is nothing but 0.1 times times uh 35 3500 so it is 350 mm okay so around this length you need to bend this so this is how your top view will appear and then you need to show the section view also so if i see along this direction and if i see along this direction how it will appear so you need you need to show that also okay so i hope how to show that it is clear to it has been shown in the nptel lecture discussion also so similarly you need to provide all the three okay along plan section and along side view and both the side views okay so this will be side view and this will be one side view and this is the plan section so finally you need to make this drawing so to show the reinforcement detail i hope the 
question was clear to everyone we saw from first step to last step how to calculate everything and how we finally designed this lab yes sir clear sir sir if we directly design this lab and uh, uh, sir if we put this in actual life sir it will work sir uh, what if we put in for example sir uh, i designed this uh, slab for someone sir hmm. sir but in the fourth condition they always provide your voice is breaking uh, sir uh, i have cleared this question sir uh, i want to know sir if we are providing in the actual sir there is always fixed type of sports we are providing so uh, so we have to change the moment hmm. in the actual condition uh, sir Uh, so this is for the moment uh, due to this live load and this for floor finish okay if the moment acting on the beam it is uh, is changing then the design will also change no we have initially mentioned the loading no, no, condition i am asking about the sports sir we are designing for simply sports sir uh, uh, sir but uh, in actual sir we have to design for fixed sir no generally we design for simply supported only it is not a fixed support no okay okay sir Uh, uh, for example, for, for practical life also, sir, we have to design for uh, sim uh, for simply uh -huh. supported. Uh -huh. There are three conditions of design: simply supported, continuous, or cantilever. So we for right now saw simply supported one base plan. Okay, okay, sir. Then we provide the directly support, sir, design okay. for like column, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, I. Guess, uh, Mr. Square PG, whoever it is, your one point one three eight doubt is clear. It is based on the steel grade. Okay, you can see IS code directly also how they calculate as Mr. Sudhir Kumar mentioned. Okay, so we'll proceed ahead now. If everyone are clear with this question. Okay, so. now we will discuss about two way slab okay uh, someone next ask any doubt yeah say okay there was one of your doubts earlier okay if any new word introduced above us have considered there is no beam at all checks do we need to perform to do them If you have introduced any wall or something, then you need to again check for the load, na? The load, the dead load will be increasing. So, your this uh, load, one more load will come here. And if there is some wall or something, you need to check for deflection. Deflection will be the same. You need to again check whether your slab thickness and reinforcement are safe for that load also or not. You need to again calculate the bending moment and the shear force, and you need to check. Whether your design is safe for that also or not. So anything introduced above the slab, it is kind of a weight acting on the slab only. So you need to consider that as a weight on the slab. But the wall is just the floor load. Ah, uh, but uh, generally for design, I guess we consider it as uniformly distributed. I will check once. I will let you know. Okay, so now we'll move into the discussion of two-way slab. So, if we see. uh so what are these two way slab so here you can see in the diagram where the bending can happen in both the direction so we have support along all the four direction okay so slabs that are continuously supported along all the four side and such that the uh, such are in dimension such that the load is carried to the support along both the direction so what is the dimensions lx by ly is less than 2 so when this is the condition bending can happen in both the directions so load transfer will happen in both the directions so that's why we have support in all the four side okay so spanning sir i have a doubt when i ask ly by lx is less than 2 that is the two way slab so 
what is two sir what is two what about two sir l y means uh, longer span l x means uh, shorter span yeah so what is two sir that numerical value is represents that is just that they got from trial and experience that how why they choose two like they generally saw how the bending would have been happening and they decided let's go with the value of two if this value is if the l y y like l x is less than two then design like this it is if it is more than or equal to two let's assume one way span okay sir if it is equal to two then you need to define design for one way slab if that was your doubt okay sir okay so these such slabs these are slabs which uh, span along both shorter and longer direction and thus we need to provide main reinforcement along both the direction to resist the bending and where you commonly found these slab these are the commonly what you found on floors and ceilings okay so when we slab is most often located in verandas or chhajjas but these slabs are more often found in general floors and ceilings okay so now so if we see how this bending is happening okay so i have this one two way slab so i have bending happening in this direction also i have bending happening in in this direction also now suppose my this floor is loaded like uniformly loaded so it's not like the whole load is causing bending in both the direction there will be there if i am assuming that my whole load is causing bending in both the direction then what will happen at every point there we need to design for twice the amount of load but that is not actually what happens so what we do we decide divide the load that is acting on the floor such that some portion of the load will be contributing to one direction of uh, deflection and some other portion of the load will be contributing to the other direction of deflection so this is how that load distribution happens so suppose if my floor is uniformly loaded okay <coughs> so the load that is present on these areas i will consider that they will cause deflection along this slide and this side and the load that is acting on this area i will consider that those load will be transferred will, will cause deflection along only this side okay so this is how code says that you need to divide the load that is acting over the floor for designing each slide each side of the slab okay now how this load division happens what are the factors that are associated with this division so suppose if i have total load w then how much will be contributing here how much will be contributing here how much here and how much here that we define by two factors alpha x and alpha y so for these two my factor will be same for these two my factor will be same so this is how we design so now when we talk about two way slab that the load is acting okay, okay so this is how we design now in two way slab also there can be two categories okay one is the condition when i have simply supported slabs where this part can lift up because of loading okay and one is my restrained slab where this part won't lift up because of loading okay so when i talk about simply supported slab i have no adequate provision to resist torsion at the corner and for this case my mx and my is given like this and the value of alpha x and alpha y i can obtain from tables 27 of is code based on the lx by ly ratio my alpha x and alpha y i can obtain from this code okay and when i have restrained supports then my mx and ly can have four values okay so at the support also i need to resist some bending moment and at the middle also i need to resist some bending moment so i have uh, four cases this will be my alpha negative this will be my alpha positive that will be along x direction and similarly along y direction i will have some alpha positive alpha y positive and alpha y negative okay so i have need to have four coefficients and how i can obtain this fourth coefficient using the is code now what code says 
when we are talking about restrain supported slab there can be restrained along one direction along two direction along three direction or along all the four direction so total there can be nine cases about restraints what are those nine cases you saw in the npta lecture discussion also where you saw around three to four cases this diagram represents all nine cases so you can see case nine where all direction has been restrained this case one where, where there is no restraint there is case six where two long edges are discontinuous there is one case where one short edge is discontinuous or restrained three edges restrained one edge restrained here two adjacent edges restrained all four edges restrained two short edges restrained one discontinuous and one uh, continuous here so like this there can be total of nine cases now for these nine cases alpha positive alpha negative along x and y and alpha positive alpha negative along x y along y and alpha positive alpha negative along x can have different different values and all these are covered in code so you can see there are nine cases here interior panel one short edge continuous one or long edge so based on what uh, what kind of two say two way slab is given to you and what are its restrained at the end you need to choose one of this uh, uh, panel and you need to choose the value of alpha uh, alpha all the four alpha values okay so for longer span the there are only two coefficients but for shorter span depending upon the ly by lx there can be different values of coefficient that you need to choose for okay sir sir uh, sir uh, which one is a good sir restrained or unrestrained sir there is nothing about good and bad it is like what is required from us okay we can't say restrained is good or restrained is bad but generally uh, if we see from like what discussion we had if we unrestrained slab can't resist torsion at the corner okay now that torsion can become an issue if the load is high so if we say uh, we can say restrained slab is more better than an unrestrained slab okay okay sir thank you sir okay but sir it is free then it is also good na sir if there is no torsion produce no stress produce then it is also good ha ah, that is why i said we can't say which is good or which is bad it all depends upon what we need to design for what are the conditions that are given to us okay sir thank you okay so this is how we calculate so once we know the coefficients we can calculate the moment and the shear and then we can calculate uh, we can design for mean reinforcement along both the direction okay so we will see when numerical on how two way slab design is done but that uh, we will see in the next uh, class now okay because it will be a slight, slightly bigger question okay so for now we will conclude our discussion here only so i will request everyone just to revisit this discussion on two way slab once before coming to the next live session so where where in the next live session we will continue to talk more about two way slab design some some additional provisions that are there and then we will see some numerical on it so just to conclude whatever we discussed in in this session we first discussed basic about design of slabs different types of slabs effective span deflection control and coefficients then we discussed in detail about design of one way slab going in a sequential order of analysis and design and we saw one complete numerical on how slab is designed one way slab is designed and at the end we discussed about design of two way slab different types of design methods of two way slab that is simply supported and restrained one and how <coughs> bending coefficients are distributed as per the confinement type okay so hey, sir is, where do you upload this uh, ppt sir uh, uh there is one folder that will be shared by you by nptl or you can see on the uh where you see the live lectures na the nptl portal there might be a link from which you can access these ppts okay, just sir. try to search one swayam portal there is something called a shraram portal okay okay sir there you can see these ppts okay sir thank you very much sir okay
square pg if it, your doubt was if it is equal to 2 it's one way slab okay if it is less than 2 we say two way slab equal to or greater than 2 we say one way slab sir are you from iit sir yeah just okay okay sir what is the sir uh, 